For a long period of time, I was stationed in Okinawa, Japan, which was a gorgeous and very brightly colored place. It's Japan, so it's weird as fuck to begin with, but the Ryukyu Islands were a special and colorful weird as fuck. The island is heavily urbanized, but there is still jungle in between the housing areas and the commercial districts, and it is crazy thick. This wasn't the low brush jungle of the Philippines. This place was just a morass of vegetation. The cities and towns themselves were very clean too, much cleaner than any other place I've been to, and the smell wasn't too bad. It smelled of the ocean, cooked meats, and seagull shit with only a little of the rank, rotten vegetation smell you typically get in jungle areas. When I say the jungle was kind of in between places, I mean just that. You could be walking down a heavily traveled sidewalk, past a mall or supermarket or something, and on the other side of the street, bam, impenetrable foliage and weird noises. They had these snakes there, habu, poisonous and hilariously aggressive, that would screw around right at the borders of the jungle meat city, and chase you around if you were unlucky enough to draw their attention. Between them and the Gangoro kids, I got my fair share of mundane heebie-jeebies. Gangoros are… well, shit. Look it up on the internet, I don't really have words for it. Pleasant enough kids, very animated, but just a weird subculture. Anyways, the fun stuff. I was spending a lot of my free time poking around the old mythologies and folklore of the area, and as you might have guessed, Japan has a crazy deep history of scary monsters, ghosts of every imaginable variety, and some really bizarre occurrences. I was in particular digging around for information on the Ryukyunese version of the Kappa. Kappas are pretty well known, turtle-shelled dudes with a dent on the top of their heads, dig cucumbers and suck the blood out of people who get too close to their river homes, yada yada. Interestingly enough, the part that's left out is that these things suck the blood from your anus, leaving a bloated corpse with a distended rectum. This sounds gross, but it actually makes sense. When someone drowns, they'll go through a couple of different stages of decomposition. Bloat occurs and the rectum does get distended, sometimes grossly. I figured people dragging up someone's body from a river and seeing the malformed orifices would probably whip up some bizarre creature to account for something that would seem so unprecedented. I thought I had it all figured out and went to a couple of different places to test my ideas and see how they were received from my various sources, which were old people. Old people who usually didn't like foreigners and eventually really started to dislike me for bothering all the time to boot. One of the guys I was talking to about this stuff was a guy named Fred Nakamura. Fred had a more Japanese first name, I'm sure, but he never told me what it was. He was the awesome old goat with a collection of some really nasty and neat stuff. He had jars of preserved fish of hideous aspect, haunted mundane objects wrapped in paper wards, and books. So many awesome books. He was a great source of information and my time spent in his dinky little house was usually occupied by me poking around and finding something weird, like a jar filled with frog eggs and asking him, what the fuck? Then he would tell me what the fuck and I'd be happy and buy him an Orion, which was this pretty awesome beer. One night, Fred and I are getting heavy into the creepy stories, and I'm complaining that while Japan has an awesome history of weird spooky shit, I had yet to see really anything spooky as all fuck. The entire island was like one big cock tease for me so far. All this lore, legend, and history, and I had yet to meet a woman whose neck was like a snake, or a hopping one-eyed haunted umbrella. I shit you not, one of the yokai things is supposed to be exactly like that. Fred gets tired of my whining and pretty much calls me on my shit, saying that if I was faced with something really and truly terrifying, I'd lose my shit and bail. And everyone knows Americans are all talk especially the ones on this island, which was mostly marines and some air force. I cop attitude towards that and puff up a bit, but he's just merciless, going on about how folks like me are all talk, no bark and no balls, blah blah blah. I know where he's going with this, so I play along to the stereotypes. It's polite, it'll get me what I want, and it makes the old guy happy to bash someone mercilessly to do it. I start bragging and he gives me a dare. 
and I take it in a heartbeat. There's a little quiet creek not far from his house, and at that creek, there is a concrete aqueduct thing that is apparently home to something pretty goddamn nasty. He'll offer to take me there if I don't chicken shit out and bail. If I do, he'll mock me, my ancestors, my branch of the military, my favorite color, and my first dog for the end of my days. Hells yes, I am in like Flynn. So this little creek is in one of the weird little sideways jungles not too far away from Cadena Air Force Base. Nothing too fancy about it. It just missed development and is pretty rarely troubled by people. It's dense bush, so we walk along the creek edge, which was rocky. The water was amazingly clean too for the first part of our trip. Crystal clear stuff. Only occasionally did I see a star from cup or anything normal like that. I could hear the streets to either side. People talking on their phones and music playing on the overhead speakers. Also cicadas. Always those goddamn cicadas. So we keep going the length of this little creek, and very suddenly, it starts getting choked and nasty. I went on about how pretty it was, specifically to illustrate how nasty it got and how quickly. One second, I'm looking at an Arrowhead spring water commercial. The next, there's dead cats all over the place, and it smells like someone slapped a leper with a colostomy bag. It was gross, stinky, and uncomfortably warm and humid. Fred just keeps struggling along, and pretty soon, the jungle starts reaching over the creek, and it's getting darker. Sure enough, we come to a bunch of large concrete pipes that serve as some sort of overflow collection. The pipes were pretty big. There were three of them, and you could walk right in without having to duck your head, and they were expectedly dark as hell. Alright, badass. You march up, the one on the right. Only the right, okay? You got a flashlight? I pull out my little kick-ass flashlight I've had for years. The thing is trusty as a crow's eye, and give him a smug grin. Good to go, Fred. When I get out of there, you're buying me a girlfriend for the evening. He shrugs and laughs and says something in Japanese before shooing me in the hole. I start to head in. I've got pretty solid all-weather boots, so I'm walking into the pipe from the middle of the creek. Not too worried about foot rot or anything like that, since I'm not planning on spending too much time there. As I go in, Fred yells at me from back up the creek, Don't be a bitch! I'm like, whatever dude. And in I go. The pipes dark as hell and crawling with spiders. The creek narrows out, and I'm able to walk on dry ground for a good distance as that little circle of light behind me gets dimmer. There is not a lot of graffiti, which actually bothered me. Usually, these places are rotten with tags and whatnot, but this place only had a very few markings. Most noticeable, a bright red and yellow mark that said, Piss go yeah, which was awesome. I peed on it and then went my way. The tunnel curved, cutting me off from my light source at the rear, and my little flashlight was doing a brave attempt at keeping the corridor in front of me illuminated pretty damn well. Eventually, I couldn't see much to my sides though, which is how the cistern chamber caught me off guard. I was going along, and I just got this feeling, halfway between spider senses tingling, and a noticeable change in pressure. I turn and scan my sides and rear with the flashlight, and discovered that I was standing in a pretty goddamn big circle room with a low ceiling. Spooky place. It was awesome and carried the noise of my footsteps like crazy. I could hear my steps bouncing around all over the place. As I was marveling at my surroundings, I noticed on the far end of the chamber, near a pipe that went further, the walls looked dirty, smudged with something, which from that distance I assumed to be crap. I walked up and discovered that the smudges were a little bit more defined. At first I figured it for graffiti and felt a little more relaxed, but as I got up there, I realized, no, it wasn't graffiti, and I began to feel a lot more worried. There were drawings of faces, hundreds, maybe thousands of them, life-sized renditions of faces drawn in some brown-black substance that could have been paint, feces, or yeah, the cliché writing aid of the terminally homicidal. I don't think it was blood, but it could have damn well been blood. That wouldn't have been the creepiest part, though. The faces. 
Yeesh. These things were drawn with care and great detail, and they were all recognizably individual. No two were alike. Male, female, young and old. Every inch of the far wall was faces. There was no empty space between the renditions either. And occasionally, a drawing would share a jawline or an ear with its neighbor. It felt weird too. You always feel like you're being watched when you're alone. But the sensation I was getting was uncanny and potent. I was being watched by this wall. I just stared at him for the longest time. Almost wanted to touch him. To feel if they were just two-dimensional or more. What broke my reverie was a face near the floor at the edge of the tunnel leading deeper into the pipeworks. The faces weren't all Japanese. Some of them were Anglo and African, and there was one face that stood out to me for its familiarity. I freaked right the fuck out. I turned to get my bearing and make haste out the exit, figuring I could haul ass until I saw the exit, calm down and saunter out like a badass and still pass my dare. My light flashed around, finding the passage I had come in from, but in its travel, it passed over something, and I only saw it for a half second. Hunched over, raggedy-assed clothes, blank white eyes. It was a good couple of yards from me, but I just didn't have the balls right then and there to put my light back on it. I wasn't alone in here, and whatever was there with me was right over there. I froze checked my breathing, and felt my heart go system critical. I could hear him breathing in there with me. The labored kind of breathing a COPD patient has. Laborious, unsustaining breaths. Not loud, but long and troubled. A long, pregnant period of time passed, where I was just waiting to either shit myself or bolt. He broke the silence first, and his voice was high-pitched, like a girl's, real shy sounding, like chimes, or a voice you'd hear belting out some jump rope poem in a schoolyard, would you take tea? I gave an involuntary shudder and tried to say no thank you, but it came out as e. I heard him move towards me, and I was gone. All my muscles suddenly decided to work for me, and the whole freezing thing let up. I took off like a rabbit on fire. When I was young, I could run. Not so much now. I still have the legs, but the rest of me has gone pretty happily soft. Back then though, kapow, off like a shot. I was half coyote, half gazelle. I could outrun anything. My grandfather once told me that his dad won a bet against the devil in a race, and had since never been short of things to run away from. Right then, I was the Flash. I left a trail of splashes far behind me, and even though it was dark as a beggar's future, I moved without fear forward, because I knew no matter what was in front of me, it could not be worse than what was behind me. I'm lucky I didn't brain myself on the wall of the pipe. When I saw that circle of light that said, Outside. Safe. I leaned into it, and shot out of the mouth of that tunnel like a cannonball. Fred was standing there, having a cigarette, and I grabbed his raggedy old ass and kept going. A couple of hours later, back at his house, he gave me a sound bitching out and mocked me mercilessly. I was entirely too happy and terrified to bother shooting him down, and took his abuse with a broad smile. Dude, what the fuck? Did I just get the shit scared out of me by some old blind artist or something? I mean, seriously. Part of me figured that there was very well a practical reason for what I had just experienced. Japan is rife with subcultures and weirdos, and it's not unlikely to run into some crazy old pervert hiding in a pipe who draws the faces of people he sees every day. And maybe the blank white eyes I had thought I saw were like sunglasses or something. Maybe he was wearing contacts. More likely, Fred set me up, and a buddy of his was in there waiting to scare the shit out of the American kid. If that had been the case, I was lucky I went with flight instead of the alternative. I had enough bad shit on my conscience. Don't need to add mercilessly beating an old man to a pulp on top of it. 
Fred started telling me the story of what the pipe was, and what it used to be. A long time ago, before the war, and hell, before the Japanese, there was a cave near there that had since been filled in. The cave was the home of an old man who took faces from people and made them into kind of a cloak he would wear as he went out hunting. If he saw someone's face who he wanted to take, but couldn't right then and there for whatever reason, he'd go home to his cave and with one long ass nail in his own black spit, paint a rendition of their face on the wall so he'd remember it. The story says, to save yourself, you had to sneak in there in the dark and smudge out your own face when you found it. I got butterflies in my stomach and remembered what I had seen down there and what I had neglected to do. I called Fred a miserable old bastard, and if that thing came for me, I'd never buy him a beer ever again. Fred laughed at me, called me a stupid kid, and then asked if I wanted to see more places like that. Of course, I said yes. Face jacket. That's what the guy was called. 